This section tests your ability to comprehend spoken English. It is divided into three parts, each with its own directions. You are not permitted to turn the page during the reading of the directions or to take notes at any time. Part A. Directions. Each item in this part consists of a brief conversation involving two speakers. Following each conversation, a third voice will ask a question. You will hear the conversations and questions only once, and they will not be written out. When you have heard each conversation and question, read the four answer choices and select the one, A, B, C, or D, that best answers the question based on what is directly stated or on what can be inferred. Then fill in the space on your answer sheet that matches the letter of the answer that you have selected. Now let's begin part A with the first conversation. Number 1. I can't seem to find the report I printed earlier. It was right here on my desk. Did you check the printer? Sometimes we forget to grab it after printing. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number two. I want to sign up for the art class, but it's already full. You could ask the instructor if there's a wait list. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number three. Can you believe my computer crashed right before I saved my work? That's terrible. Try checking if there's an autosave function. It might not be all gone. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number four. I really wanted to join the basketball team, but I didn't make the cut. That's too bad. You could try out again next season. What does the woman suggest the man do? Number five. I'm going to the library to work on my paper. Want to come? I'd love to, but I've got to finish this report before tomorrow. Maybe next time. What does the man mean? Number six. I'm worried I won't have time to finish the book before the test. Why don't you just skim the last few chapters? You'll still get the main points. What does the woman suggest? Number seven. I've been trying to cut down on coffee, but I just love the taste too much. Maybe switch to decaf for some of your cups. It might help. What does the man suggest?
Number 8. How did you manage to get that internship? I heard it's really competitive. I had to go through three rounds of interviews, but I finally got it. What does the woman imply? Number 9. Professor Miller, I missed yesterday's class. Can I still submit the assignment? I'm sorry, but the syllabus clearly states no late submissions. What does Professor Miller mean? Number 10. I've been thinking about joining the gym, but I'm not sure if I'll have enough time. I'm a member. I could show you around, and you can decide if it's worth it. What does the man suggest? Number 11. That band was amazing live. I'm so glad we went to the concert. I agree. It was one of the best shows I've ever seen. What does the woman mean? Number 12. Your sister must be really happy about getting into law school. She was pretty nervous, but now she's thrilled. What does the man imply about his sister? Number 13. I couldn't find a parking spot, so I was late getting here. Don't worry, the presentation hasn't started yet. What does the woman imply? Number 14. I've been feeling so exhausted lately. Do you think I'm getting sick? Maybe, but it could just be that you're not sleeping enough. What does the man suggest? Number 15. I've been stuck on this project all week. I'm not sure I'll be able to meet the deadline. Why don't you ask the professor for an extension? What does the woman suggest? Number 16. I got accepted to the study abroad program. I'm so excited. I'm not surprised. You've been preparing for this for months. What does the man imply?
Number 17. I didn't get the scholarship I applied for. That's disappointing. But you can always apply again next year. What does the woman imply? Number 18. I'm so nervous about the interview tomorrow. What if I say the wrong thing? You've practiced a lot and you're well prepared. Just be yourself. What does the man imply? Number 19. I didn't bring my jacket, and it's freezing outside. No problem. I have an extra one in my car. You can borrow it. What does the woman mean? Number 20. The prices at this restaurant are so high. I know, but the food is supposed to be incredible. What does the man suggest? Number 21. I didn't realize how far the hiking trail was. Do you think we'll make it to the top before dark? We'll be fine if we pick up the pace a bit. What does the woman suggest? Number 22. I'm having trouble understanding this math problem. Have you tried looking up a similar problem online? That usually helps me. What does the man suggest? Number 23. The store was out of milk when I went this morning. Oh, I'm going to the grocery store later. I can pick some up for you. What does the woman offer to do? Number 24. I'm going to start jogging in the mornings. Do you want to join me? I'd love to, but mornings aren't really my thing. How about in the evening instead? What does the man suggest? Number 25. I've been thinking about getting a new car, but I don't know what to choose. Why don't you test drive a few and see which one you like best? What does the woman suggest the man do?
Number 26. I missed my flight because the traffic was so bad. That's awful. Can you get on the next flight? What does the man suggest? Number 27. I forgot my phone at home. What if someone needs to reach me? Don't worry, you can borrow mine if you need to call anyone. What does the woman offer? Number 28. I've been having car trouble lately. It just won't start sometimes. Have you taken it to a mechanic? They might be able to figure out the problem. What does the man suggest? Number 29. I'm so behind on my work. I don't know how I'm going to finish everything by the deadline. Why don't you ask for an extension? It's better than submitting incomplete work. What does the woman suggest? Number 30. I've been thinking about volunteering at the animal shelter. It seems like a great way to spend my weekends. That sounds perfect for you. You've always loved animals. What does the man imply about the woman? Part B. Directions. This part of the test consists of extended conversations between two speakers. After each of these conversations, there are a number of questions. You will hear each conversation and question only once, and the questions are not written out. When you have heard the questions, read the four answer choices and select the one, A, B, C, or D, that best answers the question based on what is directly stated or on what can be inferred. Then, fill in the space on your answer sheet that matches the letter of the answer that you have selected. Don't forget, during actual exams, taking notes or writing in your test book is not permitted. Now let's begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to a conversation between two friends. How's your new apartment working out? It's great. I finally have my own space, and it's so much quieter than the dorms. That's good to hear, but I bet the move was stressful. It was, especially because I didn't have anyone to help. Carrying all my books was exhausting. You should have called me. I would have helped. I know, but it was such short notice. By the time I finished packing, it was already late. Well, at least it's done now. Are you all settled in? Almost. I'm still waiting for my new desk to be delivered. Until then, my books are scattered all over the floor. That sounds frustrating. It is, but I'm hoping it'll arrive by the weekend. Fingers crossed. So when's the housewarming party? Maybe once I've cleaned up the mess.
Number 31. What is the conversation mainly about? Number 32. What did the woman find difficult about moving? Number 33. What does the woman say about her current living space? Number 34. What is the woman waiting for? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a conversation between a student and a professor in a biology class. Professor, I've been reading about ecosystems, and I'm curious about the role of keystone species. How do they influence the ecosystem? That's a great question. Keystone species play a crucial role in maintaining the structure of an ecosystem. Their presence affects many other organisms in the environment even though they may not be the most abundant species. So, they're more important than their numbers would suggest? Exactly. Take the example of sea otters. They're not very numerous, but they control sea urchin populations. Without otters, sea urchins would overgraze on kelp, destroying that habitat and reducing biodiversity. So, otters help maintain balance. I see. So, losing a keystone species could cause a lot of damage to the ecosystem. Yes, in many cases, the loss of a keystone species can lead to significant changes or even collapse of the ecosystem. That's why conservation efforts often focus on protecting these species. Number 35. What is the conversation mainly about? Number 36. What example does the professor use to explain the concept of a keystone species? Number 37. According to the professor, what happens when a keystone species is removed from an ecosystem? Number 38. Why do conservation efforts often focus on keystone species? Now read along with the directions for Part C in your textbook as they are read to you on the tape. Part C. Directions. This part of the test consists of several talks, each given by a single speaker. After each of these talks, there are a number of questions. You will hear each talk and question only once, and the questions are not written out. When you have heard each question, read the four answer choices and select the one, A, B, C, or D, that best answers the question based on what is directly stated or on what can be inferred. Then, fill in the space on your answer sheet that matches the letter of the answer that you have selected.
Now let's begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to part of a lecture in a business class. Today, I want to discuss the concept of network effects. In economics and business, a network effect occurs when the value of a product or service increases as more people use it. One of the clearest examples is social media platforms. The more people who join a platform, the more valuable it becomes to users because there's a larger network of people to interact with. There are two main types of network effects, direct and indirect. Direct network effects happen when additional users directly add value to other users. An example is a messaging app where the benefit grows as more people sign up. Indirect network effects occur when the increase in users indirectly makes related products or services more valuable. For instance, as more people use a particular smartphone, it encourages app developers to create more apps for that device. However, network effects aren't always positive. Sometimes, too many users can lead to congestion or decreased service quality, which can reduce the value of the product for everyone. Number 39. What is the lecture mainly about? Number 40. What example does the professor give to explain direct network effects? Number 41. What is one potential downside of network effects mentioned by the professor? Number 42. According to the professor, what happens in the case of indirect network effects? Questions 43 through 46. Listen to part of a lecture in a marine biology class. Today's topic is the role of mangrove forests in coastal ecosystems. Mangroves are unique trees that grow in tropical and subtropical regions, thriving in saltwater environments where few other plants can survive. Their roots form dense networks that stabilize coastlines, preventing erosion caused by waves and storms. Mangrove forests also play a crucial role in supporting marine biodiversity. They provide breeding and nursery grounds for fish, shrimp, and other marine species. In fact, many commercially important fish species spend part of their life cycle in mangrove ecosystems. Moreover, mangroves are significant carbon sinks. They store large amounts of carbon both in their biomass and in the soil, which helps mitigate climate change by reducing atmospheric CO2 levels. Unfortunately, mangrove forests are under threat due to coastal development and aquaculture expansion. Conservation efforts focus on protecting existing mangroves and restoring damaged areas, which has the added benefit of supporting local fisheries and enhancing coastal resilience against climate impacts. Number 43. What is the main topic of the lecture? Number 44. What is one benefit that mangrove roots provide? Number 45. According to the lecture, what role do mangrove forests play in fighting climate change?
Number 46. What is a primary focus of current mangrove conservation efforts? Questions 47 through 50. Listen to part of a lecture in a history class. Today, let's explore the historical impact of the Silk Road. The Silk Road wasn't a single road, but rather a network of trade routes connecting the East and the West. Beginning around the 2nd century BCE, these routes allowed for the exchange of goods, ideas, and culture between civilizations like the Roman Empire and ancient China. Silk was one of the main exports from China, hence the name, but the trade wasn't limited to silk. Spices, precious metals, and other valuable goods also traveled these routes, along with ideas, religions, and even medical knowledge. Buddhism, for instance, spread from India to East Asia largely through merchants and monks traveling the Silk Road. While trade brought prosperity, it also had unintended consequences. Diseases like the plague spread along these same routes, impacting populations across continents. By the 15th century, maritime trade routes began to overshadow the Silk Road, leading to its gradual decline. However, the cultural ex jan jazz that took place over centuries, left a lasting legacy on the civilizations connected by the Silk Road. Number 47. What is the main topic of the lecture? Number 48. According to the lecture, what was one of the major items traded on the Silk Road? Number 49. What was an unintended negative consequence of trade along the Silk Road? Number 50. What does the professor mention as a reason for the Silk Road's decline? 